When 30-year-old Zoe Van Middeldijk sets out on her morning training session, she's gambling with her life. She doesn't know whether this might be the run that kills her. It's like the demon monkey on your back that you know is there. Zoe appears perfectly healthy and fit, but she and her family live with a genetic curse, a flaw that might see any of them drop dead at any time. I want to find it and I want to fix it and I'll sort of pretty much do anything to try and stop it. Three years ago, Zoe's younger brother Heath, a healthy, fit 19-year-old with no underlying health problems, stepped out of the shower and died, a victim of SADS, or Sudden Arrhythmia Death Syndrome. His heart simply stopped working. Zoe, do you struggle with the fact that he was so young when he died? Yeah. It's like, I mean, he was the baby and you're meant to protect him. <laughs> Zoe and her brothers still have difficulty coming to terms with a death so sudden and so unexplained. You were actually in the house when he died. What happened in the hours leading up to that? I just went in to ask him if he wanted a coffee and opened his door and he was laying on the floor. Didn't really know what to do, didn't know what happened, didn't understand why there was no there was no blood he'd just gotten out of the shower there was no blood there was he'd been there for a little while he was when i touched him he was cold does that make any more sense to you today than it did that day no i still don't understand why i'm i'm puzzled like it's it's put down to an unexplained death and yeah that's no answer to me these mysterious deaths kill thousands of young people a year. It even happens to elite athletes. Fit, healthy sports people collapsing during games, dying from heart failure. Virtually instant death. Instant death. This is a problem that occurs within seconds. So how many tests are you conducting for families here? We're Professor Chris Semsarian is a leading international researcher into these particular genetic conditions, all of which can cause a fatal short-circuiting of the heart. We believe that a lot of these young people who die suddenly actually have an underlying problem with the electrical rhythm of their heart. Zoe goes for regular checkups, but Chris Semsarian can't yet say whether she is carrying the faulty gene. But her odds aren't good. In a deadly game of genetic roulette, one in every two members of her family will carry the same potentially fatal flaw. We don't know the exact triggers, but whatever the trigger is, it leads to the heart going into an abnormally fast heart rhythm. So something happens with the electrical system, suddenly the heart's beating incredibly quickly. Yes. Then what happens? Then the heart can no longer maintain a good blood supply to the rest of the body. So it just is unable to pump blood sufficiently to keep somebody standing and alive. And Marshall, when I said to you that this had happened, what did you think of that? I was shocked. <laughs> yeah. And I was a bit afraid, yeah. scared. Can I have one coffee? Last year, Marshall Hastings was shaping up as a champion athlete. As a junior lifesaver, he won the title of the fastest eight-year-old on sand. And he was even quicker in the water, never more so than last October at a swimming meet in suburban Sydney. What did you get that night, that very night that this happened? I think I got... Two firsts. Two firsts. So it would have been two. So you had two races that night, and you won them both, and the third jolly race you had a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> would you have won that one if you hadn't had a heart attack? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the race started, and he dove into the pool, and swam 25 metres and suddenly stopped and sank. I was yelling, get him out of the water, get him out of the water now. And with that, oh, dozens of people uh, dove into the pool and retrieved him and uh, brought him to the pool ledge. Um, and he was 
quite peaceful. It's like he'd gone to sleep. He um, had his eyes closed. He wasn't breathing. Um, he wasn't moving. So was he dead at that point? Yes, I believe he, yes, he was dead at that point. As his mother, Anne-Marie, watched on, the difference between life and death for Marshall was the efforts of the pool lifeguards trained to use a newly installed defibrillator, which delivered an electric shock to restart the little boy's heart. And his little body kind of wriggled along the ground. Um, it was hard. It was really hard. And you've had to confront the fact that you nearly uh, lost your boy. If it had of, if this episode had have transpired anywhere else, I would have buried him then four days later. No, we wouldn't have him, no. It turns out Marshall has an extremely rare genetic fault. So they tested the rest of the family and found Anne-Marie also had this particular sad gene. She'd survived 45 years of life, even though with this condition, any physical exertion or intense emotional distress can be fatal. If shock, emotional shock, is a trigger yeah. for this condition, yes. then just standing watching what was happening to Marshall on that pool deck could have killed you. How did it not? How did it not? I don't, I don't have the answer to it. If that, yeah, that would have been, I think, to most people, a very heart-stopping event. This is the implantable defibrillator and it basically sits in the chest like so. It's very unusual for people to live through a SADS attack. To help them survive, Marshall and his mother have both had this device, an automatic defibrillator, implanted in their chests. And how much of a whack does it give them uh, when it fires off? They usually refer to it as being like a, a horse kicking them in the chest. Right. And what do you worry about? Dying again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what have they told you about that? Um, they said that if I die, this um, will start my heart again. That's him on the ground, okay. yeah. and then that's the shock. Right. When Marshall was fitted with the defibrillator, doctors referred the worried little boy to this clip on YouTube. It shows a professional soccer player, Anthony Van Loos, having a heart attack in the middle of a game. Now watch what happens. Watch his legs. That was the defibrillator in his chest, delivering a life-saving dose of electricity. But most remarkable of all is what happens next. He just gets up. And when you looked at it for the first time, what did you think? I thought, it doesn't look right. Yeah? Were you reassured a bit that he got up at the end of it? Yeah, I didn't think he'd get up. When Zoe Van Middeldyke and her family get together, there are reminders everywhere of the youngest member of their family, 19-year-old Heath, who died three years ago. For this Sunday dinner, Zoe's mum has filled a vase with wattle. Heath was a passionate bushwalker, and it's her way of keeping his spirit alive. You three have no guarantees, whether you'll live long lives or what the future might hold. No, no. No guarantees? No. The thought of it doesn't leave your mind. Every day, every day you think of it, it doesn't go away, it doesn't ease up. There's only one way to eradicate these faulty genes, work out where they are and how to repair them. This is what Chris Semsarian has devoted his life to. If he's successful, it means a cure for future generations and an end to this genetic roulette. So you're hoping to put yourself out of a job? Ultimately, that will pro that'll be my ultimate goal, <laughs> to put my feet up and relax and cure the disease. Zoe calls this genetic condition the monster, and her response to all this grief and uncertainty is to dare the monster to come and get her. And what do you think about your sister running this half iron man? She's crazy. <laughs> She's preparing for an Iron Man event on the Gold Coast, knowing that if she carries the killer gene, 
the training alone could be fatal. Are you pushing yourself in part because of what happened to him? Um, there is a drive from that, yes. You've got that hunger to do the best that you can and then there's another part of you when it really starts to hurt and burn like crazy and all you want to do is sit down and cry. It just says, Heath just comes and just goes, move your ass, just finish it because he can't. He can't, he doesn't have th that option of even entering, let alone finishing. Do you feel like this is a fight? Yes. You're yeah. in a fight? Yeah, I'm in a fight and I'm not backing down. It's, I'm gonna win. That's the end of the story.